Ah uh, yes, the New Balance 550. One of the most hype shoes this year. The question is why? And why are they so expensive? And why am I a size seven and a half? I feel like I actually have bigger feet than that, but I don't. Also, why is everybody honking? Hello everyone. Um, oh, let me move this, it's a mess in here. Hello everyone, welcome to the New Balance 550 review from the Iron Snail, which basically means if you are looking to get a pair of these shoes and you think, wow, those look amazing and trendy, they're most likely not. If they got into me, they're outdated and nobody's wearing them anymore. Today we'll be looking at the New Balance 550s and I'll tell you all about them, from their inception to why they failed to why they came back and they are now the most popular shoe in the world. And also, the only other thing, well maybe not the only other thing, also they're not the most popular shoe in the world. Those would probably be feet. There is something on these shoes that New Balance changed for the first time that made them more successful. But ultimately, like I said, they did fail. So, also today's an exciting day because my friend Brendan will be joining us at Prospect Park. And the goal at Prospect Park is to tan these legs because they're currently looking pretty gross, especially when I wear a mostly beige outfit. Also, great news, this video is sponsored by Huckberry. So today we'll be talking about the Flint and Tinder 365 pants in corduroy straight fit, which actually are probably my best fitting pants. But we'll talk about those later. I won't be wearing them in the actual video because like I said, it's like 90 degrees outside. Part of the reason that these came back was because of the beautiful, mysterious Teddy Santis, a man that is so trendy. He is one of the people that has an Instagram with zero posts and just a white, profile picture and that's it. It's so trendy and mysterious. I wonder what he'll do next. And he capitalized on the kind of retro 80s and 90s coming back, but he neutralized the entire color palette. And we'll get more into that later, but he brought these shoes back. Do you put this under or over your shirt? Hello YouTube, it's post-filming video Michael. I'm here just in case I got a little too goofy with Brendan and I need to bring us some clarity about what is actually happening in the video. So you may see me a few times. Wow. Are we filming? We did this once before. Got club seed. How's it going? And the, I messed up the audio, so we're doing it again. Brendan's being very gracious and doing it for me again. Okay, so brief history about New Balance. New Balance was formed in 1906 in Boston, Massachusetts, which hey. is close to where I'm from. I'm from Cape Cod. And then, 83 years later, they came out with the New Balance 550s in 1989, and they immediately exploded onto the scene and flopped, and no one bought them, and they died. Yep. And what's important about these shoes, or what was important when they were released, and why New Balance thought they would be so famous, is that the model prior to these did not have perforated leather. So when you're on the court, your feet got sweaty because these are basketball shoes, but they flopped for a very specific reason. Do you think these glasses look dumb, by the way? I lost my cool ones and I got these at CVS. They, they take them off. They don't look dumb, but you look better with them off. <laughs> Anyways, um, wow. You know, like sunglasses don't replace the beauty of human eyes. But they do for no, some no. people that have ugly eyes. You have who has ugly eyes? Oh, I could list at least 100 people. The reason that these shoes failed was because at the time, well, still at, not at the time, but Nike is a massive company. Yep. Converse is a massive company. Yep. And very big brands like this could do something that New Balance could not. But also, New Balance kind of messed up too. These were developed by Stephen Smith, not to be confused with Stan Smith, who has a shoe named after him, but did not design the Stan Smiths from Adidas. That's a lot. That is a lot. Steven Smith was a very prolific designer. He did stuff for Nike, Reebok, Converse, everybody. The reason that these shoes didn't blow up right away is two things. One of them was Steven Smith's fault, but also New Balance's fault. But the first one was just these very rich companies like Nike and Converse and whoever it may be, for example, could afford to have celebrities wear their shoes on the court. Yeah. So everybody saw those and they didn't really see a lot of these. The other misstep, which seems like New Balance was trying to predict where shoes could go, basketball shoes could go, is that Everybody in the NBA was wearing high tops. These are low tops. So it was kind of, people just wrote it off and were like, okay, well those are not high tops, so less support for my ankles, not as good. That's very muscular. Oh, you think <laughs> that guy's muscular? Look at that guy over there. You guy. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that guy could kill Godzilla. And now presenting Huck 
Huckberry. Um, hello. This video is sponsored by Huckberry, as I said, specifically the Flint and Tender 365 pants. And these ones are in cord and straight fit. And these are my best fitting straight fit pants I've ever worn so far. So that is very exciting for someone like me who wears pants. But these are eight ounce corduroy, which in denim, eight ounces is very light. But in corduroy, it feels pretty good just because the texture of it is different. So it feels like a medium weight fabric, but you can wear it all year round. It's also 98% cotton, 2% spandex, but you can't really feel the stretch if you're like pulling it with your hands. It doesn't feel like elastic pants or anything like that. So that's nice. You get a little bit more flexibility and comfort as well. And added to the comfort is that these are piece dyed. So most clothes, the threads are actually dyed first and then woven into a fabric and then the fabric is made. These are dyed after the fabric is made. So it gives the pants a little bit more softness than they would normally have. Did I say softness with an accent? All in all, these are fantastic pants. I like to wear them with my black boots. So you'll probably see all the B-roll I'm wearing my pretty black boots. That would make no sense considering that I am reviewing footwear in this video. So anyways, I love these pants and I love that the buttons look like bullets just in case I need to scare someone and say I have a bullet pointing at myself. Possibly the most important part is what I forgot. You have to use my link if you buy these. Otherwise, Huckberry won't know that you took my good word. You know how much I paid for these now. I paid $260 for these, which you actually didn't think was that bad of a price. No. It's actually, that's not how much I paid. Look, if I go on the goat, I go to my shoes here. I paid $127 for them. The construction of these is fantastic. I, like I said before in the great video, is that when you first get shoes and they're like not bent and the leather's very stiff, they feel very much like art and I don't want to wear them. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. But I did wear them. I wore them today. It was very, I felt very tough doing it. The construction of these is fantastic and I think the leather, contrary to a lot of other leathers and contrary to basically what Adidas is doing right now, which is shifting their leather shoes over to mushroom leather, which is like a fiber of mushrooms coated in plastic. These are pigskin, I believe. And I believe that because of two things. Number one is that the Made in USA New Balances, which you have a pair of, right? Yeah. Are made of pigskin. So I would assume that these are made of pigskin because pigskin leather is very thin, but it's also very, very tough. So it's a bit more flexible and it's a bit more breathable than calf leather or cow leather, depending on how old the cow is. This looks very thin. And then as you can see along this side right here, it's kind of bluish. Mm. That is because this is chrome dyed leather, which is very good for water resistance. It's very good if you want to dye leather a certain color because it will stay that color for a long time. And it's very good at absolutely decimating the environment and being one of the worst pollutants that mankind has made. So that's good. It's done using chromium salts. Really? Yes, which is absolutely... Yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it's really bad. This is not a specific thing to New Balance. Most leather is actually chrome tanned. So you can do research into it. I'm sure some companies handle it in a more environmentally friendly way. Just wanted to mention it. Before, Michael had been pointing out some of the nice, like, eco-friendly moves that New Balance have been keen to do. Such as, they have an Ortholite Eco Soul in eco -soul. here. Eco Soul. Eco Soul. You that? Eco Do you want to know why it's eco-friendly? Why? Because 5% of the rubber used on the Eco Soul is recycled. And they use something called Bio Oil, which is their version of oil that I don't particularly know what it is, but it's not petroleum-based, so it's not actually using oil. So super eco-friendly, right? Super eco now, now close your eyes okay. and picture what chromium salts look like in a big vat. Ortholite salts are actually <laughs> basically used everywhere. Yeah. I bet some brands pay more to white label it so you don't know it's from Ortholite, but these are Ortholite soles proudly advertised by New Balance. And the nice part about Ortholite, which we discussed may just be how soles are in general, is that the cushion will only compress 5% over time. So they'll always stay comfortable and kind of spongy. And that sponginess is also great because it lets in airflow so your feet stay cooler. Hello. Hey, is this Brendan? <laughs> yes, yeah. Hey Brendan, how's it going? That's going all right. How are you? Oh, good. The only other thing I forgot to mention on the actual like construction quality of these shoes is yeah. that they the soles, the outer soles, are glued on and then stitched down, which I find very important as compared to, well, injection molded is good because it's actually molded onto the shoe so the soles won't pop off, but if it's just glued on, I find that usually structurally, they, the, you know, you get that sole flap after a while. Yeah, I have a sole flap. Yeah, on your shoes right now, those are glued on, right? There's no stitching? Yeah. No. Yeah, so I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of that. I do like the stitching because it prevents that. You know, it, the, all the stitches could pop off and then it could still happen, but I like the fact that typically 
that won't happen. New Balance 550 agility and speed test. Take one, go. Three point five six. What was my other one? The other one? Yeah. Way slower. These are fast shoes. Anyways, though, that is about it. I will see you all next week. Brendan, thank you for joining me in this video. Um, you want to hear a quick sad story? I ordered mochi balls because I figured I'll treat myself today. I never buy ice cream. And the Grubhub delivery woman bought me. It was called Salt of the Earth Pud. And I think because I couldn't find where you'd order this on Grubhub. It came from a totally different place. I think my Grubhub driver just bought this from some store and took it out of her fridge and drove it to me.